Okay, so factoring quadratic expressions. Uh, first of all, let's just look at an example of when we do not have a coefficient in front. Okay, we do not have a coefficient in front. This is our standard form. I just left the a off because we're going to say it's always x squared. Um, now, when that is the case, something that I always do is I look at this last sign, okay? If it is positive, then you have the same signs in your factors. Okay, if it is negative, then you have opposite signs. You look at this sign, okay, if they're the same signs, then the first one tells you they're either both positive or both negative. Uh, let's see here. If it's the same, they're either a plus is both positive, a minus is both are negative. If you have opposite signs, then that is the sign of the bigger number. Okay, your numbers. Within your factors, you multiply to get the last one, you add to get the middle. Again, this part is kind of the review part. I think you know this already, but I just want to give you something to look back on. Okay, if you need to. So, we look at the sign of the last number. If it's positive, then we have the same signs. We look at the first sign to tell us whether they're both positive or both negative. If it's negative, then we have opposite signs. The first sign tells us the sign of the bigger number. We multiply to get the last one. Our factor should add to get us the middle one. So let's look at number five. x squared minus x minus 2. Our last sign is negative, so that means we're going to have opposite signs. So one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. X times X gives us X squared. The only thing that will multiply to get us 2 is 2 and 1. But this is a negative, the first sign is a negative, so the bigger number is negative. So the 2 gets the negative, the 1 gets the positive. Um, <clears throat> now I think we kind of know this, but it doesn't matter if you write this. It's the same thing, okay? It does not matter which number comes first. What does matter is the sign that goes with the numbers. As long as your 2 is negative and your 1 is positive, I don't care which one's in the first set of parentheses versus the second set of parentheses, okay? It's all about the signs. Okay, so my plan is I'm going to do one example, then I'm going to let you practice a couple, then I'm going to do one example, then I'm going to let you practice a couple, okay? So... Uh, these should go pretty quickly, 1 through 4 and 6. And it's talking about GCF. Any time you're asked to factor, you should always look for a greatest common factor first. Do all my terms have something in common? Now, it's great when it's that first number, but sometimes it's not entirely that number. It may be a factor of that number. Now, in this case, looking at number 7, it is. All three of those terms are divisible by 4. But it may be a case where, what if that middle term was 6, okay? They're not all divisible by 4, but they would all be divisible by 2. So we could still take out a 2, it just doesn't <clears throat> completely take away our first coefficient. But in this case, we can take out the 4, okay? So uh, I always think about GCF factoring as division, okay? I always think about it as division because some people, it, it's a little difficult to see. So if you have to... Once you identify that it's 4, go through and do this. Divide each term, put a little 4 under each of your terms. 4 divided by 4, 
is 1. So that leaves you with just v squared. Minus 12 over 4 is 3. V. And then 8 divided by 4 is 2. Now before we keep going with this problem, let me mention one other detail, and we're going to see what's in like this in a second. If that had been negative 4v squared, we would have wanted to take out a negative 4. If your leading term is negative, you want to factor out the negative, so it's going to change all your signs in the problem. We'll look at an example like that, but I did want to go ahead and mention it. Then after you factor out the GCF, you want to look at this trinomial. Can I factor it out a little bit more? Yes, I can. Okay, and you want to go ahead and do that. So, <clears throat> v times v gives us v squared. 2 times 1 gives us 2. My last sign was positive, so I have the same signs. My first sign was negative, so they are both negative. Typically, I wait to put my signs in to the end. I know I didn't with the first example, but usually, when I focus, I leave my signs to the very end. I don't put them in first. I put the numbers in it. Then I put my signs in. But that's just a personal preference. So if you'd rather put your signs in first and then adjust your numbers, that's fine as well. Whatever works for you. Okay, so 8 through 12, all those have a GCF. Because we're kind of holding off on it. <clears throat> Number 8, the way it's written, is not a quadratic. Okay, it's not a quadratic because we have n cubed, it's a cubic function. However, all three of our terms have an n. So in addition to all of them being divisible by 3, we can also take an n out of each one. So when we take out, when we divide by 3n, we are left with n squared plus 9n plus 14. Because the n's go away there. Uh, when you divide things that have the same base, you subtract their exponents. So 3 minus 1 is what gives us the squared. 2 minus 1 is what gives us just the n. Okay? And then you can factor that trinomial n squared plus 9n plus 14. You can factor that further. Okay? So that applies to 8 and 9. Okay? So when I first gave you some of these on the review sheet, I, I explained it to uh, most of you really the way that it should be um, done, but there is a trick uh, that you can use, and some of you may have seen this before, some of you may not. There is something called, um, when, when A is not 1, and it's not the GCF, so that it doesn't create a uh, that has a coefficient of 1, then we're going to use something called slip, divide, and slot. So, what you're going to do is you are going to <clears throat> slip this 3 to the end, and you're going to multiply. <clears throat> so this is going to become b squared plus 28b, and 3 times 55 is 165 and it was negative. Okay, now part of the reason why I don't like this is because it usually creates giant numbers on the end. Um, so I will actually be slower with this form of factoring because I, I'm going to have to refer to my calculator. So what this does is it says, okay, well A is 1 now. So we can write B times B gives us B squared. Okay, um, now we've got to uh, find factors of 165. I know it's divisible by 5, so let's just start there. 5 and 33. Well, that's good, right? Because 5 and 33 can, in some combination, give me 28. If 33 is positive and 5 is negative, 33 minus 5 is 28, and that's what I'm looking for. 33 times 5 is 165, 33 plus negative 5 is 28. Here comes the um, <clears throat> divide part. You're going to divide these numbers by what your original A was. Okay, divide both of those by 3. If it's evenly divisible, like 33 over 3 is, 
then you just simplify that. 5 is not divisible by 3. This is the slide part. So if it's not evenly divisible, or if it reduces, but it's still not a whole number, then you're going to slide that denominator to the front. Now, I would still always check it, make sure it gives me the original. Hey, I'm doing this group right here. I'll give you the paper in a second. <clears throat> always foil it back out just to make sure. B times 3B is 3B squared. The outside gives us minus 5B. The inside gives us plus 33B. And the last gives us negative 55. Okay, and that works out because that gives us the 28B in the middle. Okay? <clears throat> so, it's not my favorite way to do it, but it really does work. And a lot of you will probably find it a lot easier. Okay? So let's run through it one more time. <clears throat> you're going to multiply. You're going to slide, or excuse me, slip. You're going to slip this first term to the end, and you're going to multiply. Then you're going to factor it. You're going to divide by that first coefficient. You're going to divide by the 3. If it divides evenly, you pull that number down. If it does not, then you've got to slide it in front. Okay? Kind of neat how it works that way. So, give that a try on 14 through 18.